We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. And we're back with Scott D. Casenza. Earlier we discussed the fresh term at the Supreme Court and what to expect in the big affirmative action case. But now I want to look at what other cases are before the Supreme Court. What can we expect out of there, Scott? Well, just this week was uh, a major case regarding land regulation in the United States and another one regarding uh, voting rights. The land use case uh, has to deal with a major power grab to regulate uh, lots of land in the United States as wetlands when it might just be you know, wet after a uh, rainy season. Now, Scott, and, I, I've read your, uh, your article on this on the page of LibertyNation.com. So for right. those of our listeners thinking, what is this about? This, this, this is as, uh, as, as dry as desert or as wet as swamp water, but it's actually got some quite far-reaching ramifications. What are those, Scott? They're, the ramifications are whether or not the Environmental Protection Agency has the authority to regulate almost all building or development on um, much land in the United States of America. And the idea is, did Congress contemplate giving them that power? And if so, was it legal or did they not? And it all depends on the definitions of a few words in what I, I think that a lot of people would say is an act that was drafted without uh, the necessary degree of precision uh, that, that it should have been, which is the, uh, the Clean Water Act. Okay, so what it means is that uh, the EPA could designate a certain area of land, even if it's not on a, a wetland area, but if it uh, has a tributary going through it or it sits... It's, no, let me just stop you there, Mark, because that's more direct than what they're arguing. The... EPA is arguing that really much more tangential contact or no contact at all, but just nearby or adjacent contact from one land to another that is then adjacent to a navigable waterway would trigger the ability for the EPA to regulate that land. And by regulate, I mean, come in and say, you can't build the house that you, 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 the, the land you bought to build on, which was zoned by the local governance as buildable, had a, had a building permit issued by the, the, the state uh, government, but the EPA wants to regulate you and is charging you basically uh, up to $40,000 a day in fines if you don't do what they like. So it's a catastrophic experience for Americans who run up against, uh, you know, this kind of regulation. And it wasn't like this was like, poisoning some aquifer. They didn't want to put like a chemical factory on <laughs> some pristine wilderness. Just somebody wanted to build on their land, some acreage that they bought, again, which was zoned for it. Uh, it, it will fundamentally change uh, many Americans' lives and make their property worthless if the EPA can uh, claim regulatory uh, purchase on their land. Now, I want to go a little bit further, which is perhaps beyond the realms of just a legal discussion on this, Scott. But if the EPA manages to to do this and is not uh, held back by the supreme court judgment um what will this effect will this have on land prices well they're not going to increase that's for sure one of the big criticisms is that because of the way that the epa would have the regulation be interpreted with some vague nexus, uh, th there's some vague nexus kind of uh, woo-woo argument about what constitutes That's adjacency. a legal term for our listeners, by <laughs> yeah. the way, woo-woo uh, nexus. Th th basically, what, happen what would have to happen is every landowner uh, or prospective landowner, because that's what you're contemplating in terms of the market, would have to go to the EPA and say, can you tell me, is this a, a wetland or not? As you might imagine, Mark, that would not be an uh, inexpensive process. It's not like there's some quick uh, well-attended uh, toll-free number for people to call and say, hey, can, uh, can you tell me about this property? And they say, here you go. Absolutely not. It's hugely costly. And if you're wrong and you go ahead anyway, well, the consequences uh, can be devastating. $40,000 a day. Um, and of course, th there is the fact that uh, waterways change over time. So something that okay. isn't Regulated so you're a thousand now. percent right. Waterways do change over time, but I just want to stop you right there because we're not talking about a waterway at all. We're not even talking about a wetland. No, of course, but that would impact the areas that, that are tangential wet. to. 
sometimes during the year and is sometimes dry. And if you just took a look at it, you would never think this was a marsh or there are fish or anything living there. It just looks like regular land. Uh, so you're, but you are right. Uh, even very, you know, major waterways like, you know, significant rivers, they do, they do change over time. So Scott, uh, and another one I want to delve into, maybe make this our last case for the week, because I think it's one of the most uh, newsworthy ones, and certainly an interesting one as far as I'm concerned, is Donald Trump has uh, made an appeal to the Supreme Court, specifically uh, out of the 11th Circuit. Could you give us the details? An emergency appeal, and, and uh, Clarence Thomas is the justice who handles emergency appeals out of that, uh, out of that circuit. And he has the capability of ruling on Donald Trump's uh, appeal or passing it on to the the full court. Uh, I'll say before I even discuss the facts, I expect he would pass it on to the full court uh, for for review. Uh, Trump okay. says yep. Trump says that uh, the Eleventh Circuit committed a judicial error when it reviewed the lower court's order about a special master in the Mar-a-Lago search warrant documents case. So they seize all this stuff at Mar-a-Lago. Trump runs to federal court. He says, hey, wait a second. Uh, You should have taken a lot of this stuff, other stuff that you took. Maybe you could have it, but you can't use it against me to build a criminal case. The judge, uh, Cannon, who was a Trump appointee, says, okay, we'll appoint a special master to review those claims. And then we'll shuffle the, the stuff to the DOJ if it passes muster. And if not, you'll get it back, basically. That's the nuts and bolts of it. The DOJ doesn't like that. They run to the 11th Circuit and say, hey, we need this stuff to determine national security, blah, 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 and uh, to continue to prosecute Trump and others for crimes. That, that court, with two Trump appointees on a three-judge panel, by the way, rules, okay, fine, we're going to give the DOJ access to about 100 or so of these documents that were marked uh, classified. Now Trump says even doing that prejudices him uh, against with respect to the criminal case, and it does so against all of the rules and procedures of the court, which is to say that that decision by Cannon to implement the special master review process and how it was not appealable and it was improper that the 11th Circuit heard that appeal and that, that how they ruled. And so it's not a question mark of, uh, you know, the merits of whether there was this uh, uh, privileged egg, you know, argument, if it's granted or not. It has nothing to do with that. It's just about whether this type of ruling, whether it was okay for the court to rule on that at all at this stage. So that's what's presented to the Supreme Court. And you suspect that Justice Thomas will push this up to the full court? Yes, uh, in spite of uh, the, I wish he were like uh, somewhat more like uh, the uh, the justice that's depicted uh, on MSNBC and on Twitter. But he is a relatively conservative justice. I don't think it's um, you know it's it's not impossible that he would rule on it uh, himself. But but I think it's unlikely. All right, Scott Dixenza, we'll keep following this case on the pages of LibertyNation.com. Thank you ever so much for joining us today. Thank you, Mark. And that's about all we have time for in this week's edition of Liberty Nation Radio here on the Radio America Network. I want to thank our guests, Tim Donner, Sarah Calgill, and Scott DiCasenza, and of course you at home for taking the time to join us. My parting shot for this week is a short and simple quote from Thomas Jefferson who said, most bad government has grown out of too much government. Remember, when politicians ignore the idea of a constitutional republic in favor of their brand of democracy, they're not calling for more freedom, but rather for more government. And we all know where that leads. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. Entertaining, informative, and just plain fun. Watch Liberty Nation's The Conservative Five. Produced by conservatives for conservatives. C5 is a left free zone. Hosted by Liberty Nation's Hi, Lisa, Lisa K. K. Donner. Joined by a raucous, irreverent panel Mega of authors. Friendly. Deconstructing the leftist narratives. Down. Debating the hot, hot topics. topics. And remembering to laugh. <laughs> Join the official conservative safe space. You only did that to piss Jeff Liberty off. Liberty Nation's The Conservative Five.